this isn't exactly unethical, it's just the way human brains work, is that we're all humans first and scientists second. And by that, I mean, most fields of study, there's more than one theory about what the issue is. And unless you're in a really small uh, field or unless your theory is overwhelmingly dominant, most likely your paper is gonna be reviewed by somebody who's inherently hostile to your theory. And as I said, this isn't exactly unethical. I mean, they should try to have an open mind about all the other competing theories because they wouldn't be competing theories unless there was some evidence to support them. But you're still going to have the problem that the guy reviewing your paper is going to be somebody who doesn't believe in the theory you're pushing, most likely. And the important thing here is you can't argue with them because you're not going to convince them that their theory is wrong and they get to decide if your paper is accepted. Uh, let me actually have a specific example from that is that uh, I was actually reviewing a grant recently and after I read their first page, I thought, what a load of bull hockey. There is no way I'm, uh, um, I, I believe their theory. Where are they getting all this data from anyway? And I looked up and half the things they cited were my papers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it made me much more friendly disposed towards their paper. And I knew they were doing it for that reason, and, you, and I still couldn't overcome it. So next thing, they're a true short story. And what I'm really getting at here is that some of the, actually a lot of the times when I see problems with papers, both my colleagues' papers and papers that I'm asked to uh, be the editor for is, they've got a really beautiful set of data and nobody sees it because they've done such a bad job of telling their story. And it, it's frequently because they throw in too much especially with junior folks, they have a problem that the introduction and discussion are just too long. They, they're essentially like a little review article that they've written as part of their paper. There are some things you need to do include in it. Uh, the minimum you need to know for the study to make sense. And I guess this is what I was talking about earlier, references from other camps. And it's because, as I was talking about before, reviewers are flattered by you citing their work. So the point of the introduction and discussion is not just to get across the introduction and discussion. It's to let your reviewers know that you're not ignoring their work because it is offensive to your reviewers if, they, if, they, if your article is on something closely related to what you've done and you ignore what, they, what their work on it is. This is just, everybody likes to see uh, that uh, other people are reading their work. The next thing that I've often seen is papers that are essentially what I did in camp this summer. Um, it's a list of everything that they did in order um, through the entire time they're doing experiments. A paper is not a publication of your lab notebook. You write the paper in the order it makes to make a scientific point, not the story of how you got to that point. What can you ethically leave out of your paper? Blind alleys you went down, theories that you had that turned out to be wrong, hypotheses that turned out to be probably incorrect, but it wasn't worth the time to prove it conclusively. You did an experiment, it didn't work out, but if you actually wanted to nail it down and take a lot longer, you don't need to tell me about that. Interesting collected data that you collected at the same time, but was, which has nothing to do with the topic of the manuscript. I've seen an awful lot of that. There's a figure in there that's got nothing to do with the rest, and it's kind of cool data, but it really says nothing about the main point they're trying to make in the paper. Leaving out that kind of data makes your paper easier to publish because the reviewer and the reader can more easily judge the significance of a cleanly told story. If you give me all of that data, I don't know what to do with it, right? And neither does your uh, reviewer. The big thing that you can't ethically leave out is data which contradicts your hypothesis. If you did a bunch of experiments and there's an experiment which is technically correct, you have no reason to doubt, you know, if halfway through the experiment all of your mice uh, got flooded and, the, and it turned out that uh, half of them died early because they drowned, well that's not the same thing as dying of your condition. If there's a technical reason to throw out your data, that's one thing. But if you're, you have a experiment that technically worked and it contradicts your hypothesis, you cannot ethically leave that out. And I, I, I feel very strongly about that because there's guys working at McDonald's that have money taken out of their paycheck so that we can have what is frankly a fairly cushy job. The reason that they agree to have money taken out of their paychecks so we can have this job is because we're doing something, we're producing science that benefits humanity. Maybe not now, but at some point the science you're doing is going to result in people not dying of disease and you have a responsibility to bring clarity to the field through your work. So your manuscript shouldn't just be true in a technical sense, it should actually be uh, to the best of your ability and advance in the field. Um, as both a reviewer and an editor, 95% editor, uh, of readers are never gonna see anything but the title and the abstract. I often am very aggressive about policing the title and abstract of stuff that I'm the editor or reviewer for because 
I want to make sure that the title and the abstract accurately convey what the paper actually does. And you should do that yourself. I mean, don't, don't put on errors there. Make sure that you're accurately uh, conveying to the field what it is that you've actually found. This is a review of what I just said. Keep the literature review tightly focused, but include citations from likely reviewers. Keep the experiments you include tightly focused. And um, so the work that's not relevant to the point of the study, I'm gonna have a use for that later. Essentially, what you use all that extra data you generated for is answering your reviewers. Because your reviewers will ask questions and with only a little bit of misinterpretation, you can interpret their question to be asking for all that data you didn't include. 